like to call to order the District of Chetman Council uh, meeting, uh, February 6, 2023. Uh, may I have the opening uh, statement read, please? As the gathered today on the traditional territory of the Treaty 8 Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetman, we do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community, and we shall endeavor to conduct our business and invest in Okay, thank you. Prior to adoption of the agenda, we have an item, uh, late item, RA2, that will be added. With that added, is there any other new business? Councillor Peck? Uh, just a letter of support for the BC EH, EHCS. DCEHS. I'll, I'll go into detail when we get to it. Okay. Any other new business? Not hearing any. Adoption of the agenda. But there's two items. So moved. Go ahead. So moved. On. With, with the additional two items. Yeah. Thank you. All those in favor of the agenda. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Carry it. Minutes. Minutes of the regular council meeting held on January 9th, 2023. So moved. Any errors or omissions? All those in favor? Carry it. All right, all right, number uh, four on our uh, list in our agenda is delegations and it's uh, the Chapman Volunteer Fire Department Service Awards. And I have here Gord Galbraith and I don't see Dan. I don't see Dan. Okay, Gord, would you? Thank you for your services. Doris, the pleasure of knowing you. And, and, knowing and you still you. <laughs> in, the, in the future, we will uh, be happy to have you as a uh, volunteer fire department to add to the 25 years because it's uh, very uh, prestigious that people reach milestones and it's very important to us as a community and every other community to have people like yourselves that take the time and it is time you know it I know it that volunteers very precious time and I'd like to thank you for that time that you give us to our community and all across uh, Canada and everywhere in, in the world volunteers run our people in the community, right? Because you are the community. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
I first on the you peer there, or you, are you the peer in the Bible? Well, she's your part of the <laughs> Okay. So anyway, the volunteer is very special uh, for us in any community that we are involved with. It doesn't matter if it's volunteer for baseball, hockey, skiing, anything. But to put yourself on the line for us, which is a very respectful thing to do, and I appreciate that very much. And I'm certain the community respects you for that, that volunteerism. And the stuff, other stuff you do in the community, man. It's, very, it's my pleasure to give you this award and for giving 35 years of volunteering in our community. What a great thing. What a, I can't praise people enough for volunteering. Thank you very much for that. It's not too often we uh, have the pleasure of having 60 years of service in front of us at one time. So uh, thank those gentlemen uh, for what they do for our community. And uh, without them, uh, the community sure uh, would suffer. And uh, I'd like to thank all the volunteer fire department uh, volunteers that come uh, before us and uh, are part of our community. Thank you guys very much, and ladies. I know we have some, uh, some that are uh, the ladies that do uh, volunteer the time, which is great. I, I think it's all totally awesome that we have volunteers that uh, help us out. All right, enough of that, because 60 years is a long time, and I believe that we should all be thankful, and I certainly we are. Bylaws. District of Chetland. Fire protection, wow, isn't this ironic? <laughs> fire and fire, perfect. Uh, this is the Chetland Fire Protection and Life uh, Safety Regulations Bylaw Number 1151, 2022 requires adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? B2, District of Chetwin Revenue Anticipation Bylaw Number 1151, 2022 requires adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Committee reports and liaison reports. Go ahead and take it from the bench. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Chelsea. Quite a lengthy report. That's fine.
moving along, Chetwin Public Library update. The library board held their AGM on January 24th. A new chair has been elected. Highlights include a letter from the regional district dated January 23rd, 2023, stating that the new library is a bit behind schedule due to the late arrival of the beams, but on budget financially. Director Dan Rose has confirmed that the PRRD has covered the financial shortfall while he waits to see if the District of Chetwin is willing to contribute further. Uh, these are his words in quotations. I have money to cover the shortfall and have committed to cover it. Past history tells us that large capital funding on shared projects has been shared equally usually. The District of Chetwin is well short on that, on this project. Any further assistance by the District of Chetwin would be appreciated. I would like the 450K. That still leaves the district well short of Area E contribution. If Chetwin steps up, I can reduce my commitment. I had to commit while I waited for your decision. Moving on to the uh, NCLGA Conference Organizing Committee. The North Central Local Government Association Conference will be held on May 9th, 10th, and 11th, 2023 in Dawson Creek, and is being co-hosted by Chetwin and Dawson. Resolution deadline is March the 10th at 5 p.m. And there's an excellent resource on the website to understand resolution guidelines, writing guidelines, as well as an example of a well-written resolution. And I have forwarded um, all this writing with links to uh, Deanne so she can distribute if you are looking for those links. The NDIT Northeastern RAC, I attended my first in-person meeting in Fort St. John on January 20th. We went straight from Prince George to Fort St. John, and it was quite a hectic week, but we discussed various projects seeking funding approval. We'll meet again in March. I am willing and available to discuss funding opportunities with any of my colleagues or community members who have projects or know community groups who require funding for projects that support economic development in the Northeast. And I've got a link for you there as well. BC Hydro Go Fund. Our group had our first meeting via Zoom of January 24th. We approved two regional grants for community projects. There's great funding opportunity here as well for nonprofits to access funds up to 10,000 per grant. And I urge all community members to go online, view the criteria and applications at the BC Hydro Go Fund. Uh, we're giving away 100 grand a year, and there's three more intakes for 2023. And to finalize, seniors housing. There are two vacancies at Little Prairie Haven, two vacancies at Sereris Place, as of the board meeting on January 25th. And Sereris Place is hiring a facilities manager. And if you know a qualified candidate, I have put an email uh, on the link for you to have a look at. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any other reports? We had, uh, yeah. I do. Um, I attended the Museum Heritage Society uh, meeting last month, and they are planning on opening sometime this year. Um, they're going to have a work blitz to try and get it ready. Um, they're applying for funds to the Peace River Regional District. They would like to rehab the entrance room with paint and lighting. And they were also wondering if perhaps they could get a chainsaw carving put up there just to increase traffic. And also, I mean, they didn't know if they were attached to or could be attached to the trail system in Killen. And then last Friday, Councillor McDonald and I attended the Northern Lights College Strategy meeting and small campus revitalization. And it was quite interesting. They're opening up uh, the business management program starting September of this year, 2023, with 20 international students. Um, they're hoping, this is a pilot project, and they're hoping that by attracting international students that they can have a ongoing intake so that they can start to expand options um, at our college. Um, they also offer ECE and Yes, at the college right now that you can do by um, video conferencing. Um, most of the students are going to be doing a homestay program and they will have spaces for local students. We said they won't turn away any locals from the program and job posting um, will go out in the spring to find an instructor for that. It was quite an interesting meeting. They had lots of stakeholders from all over the community, so it was very well attended. That's it. 
Thank you. Any others? I just like to add that um, to second what she said, it was very well attended. We heard uh, a lot of conversation over um, bringing more programming to Chapman. There was a huge appetite from the community to have more programming come to Chapman and having the international students fill it in here um, just helps them consistently to, to bring more programming to Chapman. So I look forward to seeing what they can do. Thank you. Good reports. Uh, any questions, or do you want to answer questions right now? We have uh, the late item. Uh, we'll address some of the items that we were talking about about billets, and uh, so we'll, maybe that we'll discuss some of that uh, once we get to R P uh, two. Thank you for your reports. Uh, the mayor's got. Uh, Julia did an extensive uh, on the natural resource form, so I won't uh, do that, but I, I got some good good news uh, because it was all seemed to be a little bit uh, dark and gloomy in the last little while since uh, campus put out his release. But I do have some, uh, I do have some good news about the Northern Medical Program. Uh, the Northern Medical Program started in 2000. There was a rally held in Prince George that uh, we weren't training our medical uh, people, like doctors, uh, nurses, in the north. They had to go down south, uh, lower mainland, to get trained. So the Northern Medical uh, Program, uh, in June of 20, in, the June two, uh, in June 2000, a critical healthcare shortage in Northern BC sparked a public rally with several thousand people in attendance. With uh, presentations from local leaders, the, ra the rally led to a community demand for medical schools in the north. So this started in uh, 2000, and by 2002, uh, the north, Northern Medical uh, Program Trust uh, started. So there was a two, two years, and then the trust started to, uh, uh, from the time the rally, <coughs> uh, Medical Program Trust in uh, first intake was uh, 2004. That was when they started uh, to get uh, their uh, people into the medical schools in uh, Prince George, uh, UBC, uh, UNBC. Local and provincial governments uh, and others develop, developed a uh, proposal and then a plan to launch a medical school that would train physicians in the north with the key skills needed to work in rural and northern communities. At the time, the Northern Medical Program, as a distribute, distributed site of the UBC faculty and medicine, delivered the partnership with UNBC, represented a unique concept in an undergraduate medical education. Instead of the students uh, spending the majority of their time training in large urban centers, together the sister program from uh, Iowa Medical Program in Victoria and a Northern Medical Program, which was launched in, uh, in, the, in the North here in, uh, from Prince George. So these were very important uh, milestones for the medical uh, program in the North so that we get to teach uh, our uh, medical students right here in the North. One of the things that uh, they look for contributions from uh, everyone in the North, uh, there have been Right from the start, uh, the trust also had a following corporate membership. Uh, Campor, uh, CM, Rio Tinto, Ca Alcam, West Fraser, corporate members of the trust contributed a minimum of $300,000. And a question uh, asked what was uh, Chetman's contribution. So uh, we had pledged $82,040. And in March, uh, March 31st, 2022, this is now valued at $136,494.30. So the contribution from just a small community of 82,000 82, grow, grown that large, that means our con contribution went just about one and a, uh, a 1.6 times it grew. So it, just from little beginnings grows big things. That's where we get the doctors and the nurses. And here she goes on to say, 
I guess I don't have that uh, item with me, but we had three from the medical program trust that were given uh, opportunity for funds to uh, go for their training and they got the funds through that uh, medical program trust. So this is a good thing that happens in the north here that they don't have to go to the lower mainland to get their training. They could go right, go to UBCM, uh, UNBC and uh, have that kind of a opportunity in the north. And uh, it's been a known fact. You train in the north, you stay in the north. All right. Load up again. Any other? Uh, we're, we're good with that. Okay. Get back on the line here. And I will uh, be uh, giving the assistant the report that uh, Northern Medical Trust, uh, Northern Medical Program Trust gives and that you can uh, receive it from Lenora and there's links on it. So I will be passing it on to the assistant for distribution to the, to the public and to uh, counselors. So that'll be going to, uh, to uh, Lenora and our assistant to pass to everyone. All right. Discussion items, Local Government Leadership Academy 2023 election, Elected Official Seminar, North Central Local Government Association Session. I'll make a recommendation that council authorize all members of council to attend the local LGLA 2023 Elected Official Seminar, NCLGA session, March 15th to 17th, 2023 in Prince George. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carry. DI2, First Nations Major Project Coalition Engagement Event, the Value Driven Economy Conference Informa Information. I'll make that recommendation that council, council authorize two members of council to attend the First Nations Major Projects Coalition, the value -driven, Values Driven Economy Conference, April 24th to 25th, 2023 in Vancouver. Second. Discussion? Council, you done? What kind of budget do you have for these type of things? But there seems to be a Mm -hmm. So far, um, but I would see this as a very valuable one. Do we have uh, a little bit more? I have to refer to uh, staff. We do generally have enough in the budget to cover some conferences, and as we go through the rest of the, of the operational budget negotiation and, and whatever the council discussion council, then we can kind of allocate the necessary funds. That information uh, you'll be handing out to uh, council if uh, asked? Yes, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, our finance director is away today, but he's back at the Wednesday. And we'll, we'll be having budget meetings starting Wednesday, and then council will have a break on it for about a week or two. Okay, thank you. Good enough? Okay. Any other? Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Correspondence. <coughs> C1 to C4 or C5. Sorry. I'd like to pull C1 and 2 for the session, please. Now, can we see C3 to C5? Okay, 
Let's uh, get started with C1, and then we'll continue down. The only one that's not pulled is C2, that'd be fourth C. Is that correct? We're going to discuss C1 and C2. Yeah, okay. And 3 is the only one that is uh, not pulled. Okay. She's 3 to 5 her. Right down. Yeah. Okay, good comfort. Just following up on the district's statement um, as to this situation, I would just like to discuss it and see if there's any more information that can be shared. Uh, staff, uh, because I know we were in a meeting with the camper and uh, we are we obligated or are we waiting for any other terms? Well, we can share what we have to date to worship. If you'd like, I can speak to it or you can if you'd rather. Yeah, go ahead and speak to it. We will uh, discuss it as we go. Okay, so uh, from basically the first day that we've had the announcement from Cancor when we met with the executive, uh, we've been assured that there's a lot of uh, support coming for the workers. Actual boots on the ground haven't really happened yet. It's still, uh, they're still kind of negotiating it. But we have three ministries involved, provincial ministries. Uh, we've got every level of uh, government in the province, a little bit of federal support offered. Uh, just, you know, Northern Lights College has stepped up and Nicole stepped up. There's a lot of, of uh, support. We have even uh, uh, Paul Mill from the PA is going to come over and do, uh, in Manitoba, is going to come over and do a job fair in Prince George and Shetland. And uh, uh, what's happening right now is we have a meeting scheduled for, for next week, the 16th, actually February 16th. And that will be with all the stakeholders pretty much. There'll be uh, local chiefs, uh, uh, Soto and West Boverly. There'll be ministry representatives, uh, uh, EI representatives, uh, post-secondary training, like retraining workers representatives. And, and that's when we're supposed to see some actual firm and, and, and useful help. Right now we have a lot of, of assurances, but we don't have anything concrete. So this meeting on the 16th should give us that is what we're hoping for. We had a representative of the, of the provincial government tell us on Thursday of last week that uh, um, there has been a new development that we'll hear about early to mid this week, but she was unable to share with us, but she said it would become public knowledge really quick. Um, we're not getting, as far as the district office, we haven't we haven't received any real requests for assistance. We've had some requests for, you know, do we have any information to share? And we've been sharing everything we possibly can. I know His Worship has been out in the community talking to people daily. Uh, his Worship has had, I think, what do we do? Like about eight interviews now with the press, ranging from Canadian press to local. <laughs> and uh, um, he's done really well with them too. He's, he's, you know, we, uh, we got the word out there on a, on a really broad, scope of what we're facing and and you know sometimes i think sometimes this works better than we think it does if we look at you know mayor council authorized me writing a letter to Trudeau about the the the, 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 the bill c21 amendment and uh, um, Trudeau's government the liberal government has dropped that amendment because there was enough of an outcry from from smaller communities and northern communities and, and hunting communities and, and that kind of thing saying that this unfairly targets a lot of people that rely on hunting for assessments. Um, so I think sometimes we have wins where we don't even see them, and we're all hoping that that's what it's going to be with CAC for as well. Oh, Wes Fraser should also have to step up as well and, and saying that they'll be bringing on everybody they can. CAC for has, has offered, I'm sure everybody's read it and heard it at length by now. Kind of saying, you know, bridging for employees close to retirement age, uh, help relocating, transferring to other mills. His worship has, has asked them if that will include if they transfer to like uh, another industry. You know, if they didn't necessarily go to CAF or if they went to a different mill or say mining, would they get some help? 
Um, so they'll have severance pay for for all the employees that are uh, eligible for it. Uh, some counseling. There's going to be some counseling. The meeting next week. We also have representatives of the uh, Ministry of Social Services as well for for counseling as well. Because sometimes you can see, you know, a, a mental health backlash as well with mass layoffs. And so that's kind of where we're at right now in broad brush nutshell. And as soon as we have more information, I'll continue to send it out to Mayor Council as quick as we get it. Thank you. As for the community member or the workers that I chatted with uh, from uh, Camp Or, uh, they are uh, sitting there and some of them, uh, the seniors, senior employees are, are taking it like uh, they're getting severance pay, that's fine. It's the ones in, the, in between that are 30 to 50 in that age group, they're saying that they've got to look for another opportunity, right? So uh, some are taking it that they don't know what to do. The ones that I've talked to says, I don't know what to do. So this is where the government and uh, the community members like myself and uh, every, everybody sitting in here need to be aware of that uh, losing your job, that you've been there for 10, 20 years, and even if you just started, now you gotta go look again. So th these are some of the things that I've been uh, told from uh, the employees there, and uh, which is not a very good place to be. And uh, as for camp for itself, and what we made clear when we did chat with them was that the possibility of uh, having the transition made clear to the employees, which some of them aren't getting. So I know it's probably hard as an employee to tell somebody that you're not gonna be working here no more. So that's a pretty tough statement to give and to accept. I think the acceptance of losing a paycheck to pay your mortgage, house, and car, toy, anything, that's a big thing that is probably weighing on every employee there. So maybe I'm wrong with every, but uh, the ones that are being affected in that manner, it's a tough pill to swallow. And I feel for those people that are, are going through that, that maybe have to move. Hopefully the community and other industries step up and they don't have to, which, is, uh, which will be quite uh, beneficial to them and to our community because we don't want to get smaller and we don't want to lose any of the economic value and the community value. And that's where I think sometimes it gets lost. We just finished with uh, the volunteers and I know some volunteers that are work at that mill. So, you know, it's affecting our community as a whole. So in the transition from being at work to not being, not being able to go to work. That's one of the things that we have to be aware of when we do speak to these uh, employees that are losing their job. So uh, the reality of this thing coming down the road, Camper put up a statement, $2.1 billion spent in the last uh, 10 years, and I believe I've made the point of, uh, in the past, that Camper itself had 600, or 5.5, 5.8 billion dollars in 2021 outside of BC. So, anyway, that's a uh, fiber story, and uh, we can get into all of that, and which is something that uh, we will talk with Camper and uh, West Fraser and about the fiber situation. We have nothing to do with as council. All we do is advocate for, for employees and our community. I did have kind of an interesting anecdotal thing happen to me yesterday that will kind of, kind of illustrates a little bit about the ripple effect that we'll see, that, that we'll, we'll be analyzing for quite some time. My mother-in-law and father-in-law live in Port St. John by Doc Kearney and their ha the house next to them was for sale. It was bought by a supervisor from Canfor whose spouse is a school teacher who will be teaching at Doc Kearney next year. So we know we've lost 
and their house is obviously for sale here. So we've lost a homeowner, the taxes, a teacher, a, a, a local you know, working family, and, and all the benefits that they provide to our community and our economy. So these are you know, like our hockey coaches and, and our, and our you know, volunteering at school events and, and all these other things. So, so the ripples can be kind of widespread. But we've also heard that, you know, I've heard two people that have successfully interviewed at Canoe Coal, and they're really actually quite happy and excited about a career change because it's something new, the pay is similar, uh, they feel like it's, it's more of an opportunity in some ways, and they're staying in the community. So, so there's, you know, I think what we see in the North is that we are resilient and, and we do bounce back like we did in 2008, 2009 with the, with the big layoff then. Okay, moving on. Okay, C2. I was just wondering, um, this is the second distribution of this um, CWF. I was wondering what the first, was the first distribution used for something specific um, or more general? And do we know what well, we, we would use this distribution? I'll pass this one over to oh. you. Know um, <clears throat> I don't want to guess, but I believe the first allocation went to the water park, some of it. Um, as for the second allocation, I can't speak to that. You've given any direction in regards to where that should go, but Kevin being gone, he would be the expert in regards to that distribution. Um, but it is uh, about the same, it's a little bit less than what we received the first time, but it's close to the same. So you can discuss that, I believe, next week during our uh, budget de deliberation, so bring forward. Uh, my apologies, I thought that was one of Elmo's projects, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin will have to speak to it when he, when he gets back then as part of the budget. Okay, uh, staff, and uh, you said when is the financial officer back? He's back actually uh, Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. So if we need to ask a question, can we get that information? Yeah, okay. I'll get the answer for it and it'll be on an email. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? We're good? Okay. Motion to receive C1 and C2. All those in favor? Okay. Information items. I want to add 25. Anything to be cool? All those in favor? Okay. Reports for action. Copy one zoning amendment uh, 4725 Nicholson Road and 4728 4A8 Street Northwest. Make the recommendation that official community plan amendment bylaw number 1156 2023 and zoning amendment bylaw number 1157 2023 for 4725 Nicholson Road and 472848 A Street Northwest be introduced and given first and second readings and that a public hearing be scheduled to obtain public input on official Official Community Plan Amendment Bylaw Number 1156-2023 and Zoning Amendment Bylaw 1157-2023 on February 21st, 2023 at 4 p.m. Councilors McDonald, second. All those in favor? Okay. Yeah. 
the new item or the late item RA2 North uh, 2023 North, North, Northern Housing Initiative Program. We have one recommendation. Shall recommend that the we approve the application to Northern Development Mission Trust for the Northern Housing Initiative Program for 2023. Second. Second. Council Beck. And uh, just a little bit of information. Uh, total funding available is up to ten thousand dollars door. I mean I'm gonna ask uh, our economic developer when we just put a door there, what does that mean? Um, so this uh, initiative is with Northern Development Initiative Trust. Um, basically it's ten thousand dollars a door for per unit. So depending on what's being proposed, so there's shell range projects for housing initiatives to support our Chetland housing study that was just completed and adopted by council. So if it fits within that component, a project can be presented. So this could be per project, depending on how many units are being built or how many houses are being built, depending on what the project is. So each project uh, can be applied for. I'm suggesting obviously we start with one application and see where we go. We do have some interested participants already on the developer side of it. And what we are is we are the body that's in between that. So NBIT would <clears throat> provide the District of Chatham with $200,000. Then those applications would come forth with two council based on um, development permits and building permits as normally, just like facade. And they will be approved based on per project. So, uh, so the door meaning if there's a, a duplex that means two doors, is that correct? Correct, so there is criteria, so they can, each proponent can meet, can apply depending on the project, but the maximum that each one can get is $200,000. Okay, thank you, Sam. Any questions? Is this applying to single family homes as well? There is a component of no, it's, it's meant on multiple. Um, and each of the products would be reviewed under the criteria, but it's it's based on larger larger components than residential, because that would be an individual rather than a, a housing or rental component. That would be like a mortgage type thing. So I, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, if uh, Northern Lakes College or any other uh, uh, investor building close to the college, say for campus reasons and others, uh, this would apply to them if they apply for the grant? That's correct. So it'll be based on us marketing it and providing it based on information. So that's a good example. The college is looking at a wide range of opportunities, but one of them being dorm development. So if they do do new construction, they will qualify under this program. It just has to be shovel ready and a supply. Northern Development Initiative Trust receives applications quarterly. So if we use one, for example, in one year, there's no reason that we can't get ahead of it and put an application now that we've got our program attached to this. Um, I put the draft design plans, the deadline is tomorrow. So if council approves, the application will go in and hopefully we'll be ready to go come spring for any possible construction. Any other uh, discussion? All those in favor? Oh, go ahead, uh, Councilor Moore. Just looking for clarification. I mean, it, it says projects consist of construction of a minimum of four new self contained dwellings. And then it says self contained dwelling. Like, well, exactly what what is, is meant by that? What's, that? what's the minimum size for? Basically, a duplex. Okay, not a fourplex. It, it can be a fourplex. It depends on 
as long as it's like an apartment style, that kind of thing. And the criteria that I've developed that I didn't attach to this because it's draft at this particular point, so I want NDIT to review it. But each one of those, but it's more than one. More than one. It has to be more than one unit. Any more discussion? Discussion? All those in favor? Great, Councilor. Any more? Okay. All those in favor? There you go. So do we have to wait for uh, Wednesday for this one? You sent for accounts payable checklist. Is that what we're on? Yes, that's so we can do that now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to make that motion that the uh, checks registered for the month of December 2022 totaling $1,313,303.53 be received. Second. Second. Councilor McCormick. Discussion? Go ahead, Councilor Beck. Just a couple of things. Uh, what would we have Dicey Colton doing just out of curiosity? They do overhead doors for oh, oh. large shops. There we go. Thank you. Any more discussion in the all those in favor? Okay. No new business. Do you? Oh yeah, you do have one. Okay. Councillor Tech. Um, week before last, the um, BC uh, EHS was in was in town. They did a presentation down at the uh, Fireball Ambulance Station, and uh, I'd like to have a uh, council recommend or have a letter recommending support for their high school credit program. They're doing a pilot project right now in Rutland, just outside of Kelowna, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a four credit program. Yeah, with an introduction to EHS, and it's, uh, I, I think it's a good idea, and it would put, maybe spark the interest of uh, more people to get into the uh, emergency uh, health services, and I just think it's a good idea, we should send a letter of support to the Minister of Education and Minister of Health. If that's a motion, I'll second. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more discussion on that? And seconder to that motion. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you, no. Public questions. Is there anything on the line yet? Yeah, do we still okay, thank you. I'd like a motion to uh, recess to a closed meeting. Second. All those in favor? Staff, should we uh, mention what's in uh, our agenda that uh, we're going to close for, or do we just do we close? It's, it, it's actually similar to the, the last one for real estate. It's actually kind of I got the, I'm happy you're achieving myself. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, we're going. Thank you. We're in recess. Michael Forward for Chet TV and Peace FM, and joining me in the studio today is the mayor of Chetwin, Ellen Coutre, and of course, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's been a week uh, since the uh, announcement from Canfor about the upcoming shutdown of the uh, local mill. So what's been going on in the community since that time? 
Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, one of the major things that happens, and uh, we don't like it, but uh, it's part of, seems like, our lives is rumors. And some of the stuff that we talk about uh, outside business it seems to be uh, having a little bit of our rumor mill go, and it's kind of uh, ironic. It says rumor mill, and we have a, to close down the network, having a permanent closure at the Ganford Saw Mill. But anyway, I'd just like to say that uh, the rumors uh, that happen, that's people's ideas, people's opinions, and uh, that is theirs until there's facts. And the fact today is that the permanent closure of our mill, uh, camphor mill in town here, which will affect 157 employees. Uh, according to our, our talk with uh, Canfor, it's uh, going to be 140 because 17 will be kept on as part of the logging division because uh, Canfor does have a TFL, that's tree farm license to operate in uh, BC and in our area. So that will help out our local, uh, other local mill, which is a West Fraser mill, uh, to obtain fiber through, uh, through the TFL. Hopefully that's the way it'll work because uh, they're in talks right now. I can't speak for West Fraser. I cannot speak for Canfor. I just know what the facts are that the mill is shutting. But when they do talk to us, uh, which they uh, talked to us uh, last week, Canfor uh, CEO and their uh, HR department, they came and sat with council and mayor and discussed a few items and that was one of the items was that uh, the fiber will stay into peace hopefully it'll stay into peace because i do see trains with uh with fiber on them moving out uh, through our community so this is one of the points that i made clear to uh, the ceo of don kane of canfor that we don't want this to happen here if it's going to uh, west fraser which is uh, part of our community, that's totally awesome. It, uh, at least we will uh, have uh, our sawmill operating at the West Fraser uh, operations here in town. But on the other hand, there's another camphor mill that's operating in Fort St. John, and it will uh, rece receive some of the fiber that uh, the tree farm license does uh, give uh, the opportunity to camphor to move that around. So hopefully it doesn't go too far and uh, to have uh, the sawmill workers in Fort St. John and in Chetwin continue to operate the ones that uh, they do have uh, operating right now. So it uh, it's going to uh, cease operations at the beginning of April at the sawmill itself. You have sawmill, then we dry the wood, and then we uh, continue on to the planer. And the planer uh, will plane it, dry uh, the dried uh, wood, and they will uh, uh, sell or ha have it uh, shipped out. So the timeline is beginning of April, first week in April, the sawmill. The final will be out of the planer, end of April, first uh, week in uh, May. So uh, that's a pretty short window here for people to get adjusted. It's a terrible shock uh, to the community. Uh, the dollars itself uh, from one paycheck uh, and for people that are just getting started, they're going to have to go look. And the people that are 10 to 20 years and yet not uh, close to retirement, another shock. What do we do now? So that's where uh, the community and uh, the government has re reached out, again for itself, and the uh, local union, uh, the steel workers, are having discussions with, uh, with Canfor, and the government will get involved here. They've been contacting uh, the, uh, the district office, seeing how we can assist, and there's anything we can do at our uh, office, we are going to. So this is part of uh, the process of helping our uh, uh, citizens at Chatwin that contributed over the years, and some of them 47 years, and maybe uh, a little bit longer than that working at that mill. This mill's been here 60 years. So it's uh, got a legacy here of uh, having a good place to go to work. I don't believe they've ever uh, neglected on paying somebody. There's never been a stop payment on any check from Canfor, and I'm not saying that they've been the best employer but they strive to be the best employer uh, in situations. But they did have closures before, so a year ago when they started uh, the operations of uh, moving out of the country and into the United States, 
So some of the stuff that we uh, see now with the lack of fiber and in their press release, they state the lack of fiber to operate. And, they, and we're not just talking a small mom and pop operation, we're talking worldwide. They're in many countries. So they give us a little release uh, stating that though we've uh, spent, you could quote them, $2.1 billion in BC in the last 10 years. So, you know, you, you break that down, a uh, big operation like that, you know, so uh, the writing's been there for a little while, and if we read it properly, the wall tells us that it's been uh, trending in that direction. Uh, two weeks ago, we had the PG Pulp Mill operation uh, being told that they were being permanently shut down. And then uh, with our uh, operation being told last week, so did uh, Houston. And they're uh, indefinite. They're uh, looking to move some of their uh, technology into today's technology and having to uh, process uh, at a different level. So it, it's a different scenario, but people are going to be out of work for a little while there too. For sure. Are you uh, happy with how Canfor has been communicating with you folks so far on this issue? Uh, yes, I, I, uh, I'm happy with uh, what they've been doing with their uh, PR uh, and or HR or whatever, uh, the communications with us. It's totally uh, like, uh, I, d I don't know, uh, I've never been in negotiations with somebody uh, that's shut down, so I don't know where that, that question that you've asked me have they been good? So I, I don't have no gauge to gauge it on. Oh, I'm just saying, are you ha happy with the how the communication has flown so far? They doesn't they doesn't seem like they've been holding anything back, or they've been giving you the facts. Yes, yes, I I agree with that point that, that they've been giving us the facts. Yes. Okay. Uh, so obviously, you've been out in the community talking to community members affected by this. What's the general feeling in the community right now? To be blunt, shitty, and I don't, uh, I don't want to make it sound like, oh well, we we're the, we're doing our best doing this. It's never our best when we lose a uh, lose a job, and uh, families affected. It's not only uh, the can for employee, but it's uh, if he's got a spouse or she's got a husband that works in a different sector, we lose two. So you know that that's uh, what's been going around is uh, when I address the rumor thing. That's what's been going around too when I talk to people about uh, sale of this and sale of that. And we're talking about the mill. And until until we know the facts, and the only fact that I know right now is that we are uh, closing a mill in our community. That's the fact that I know. So all the other stuff about the rumors and what we hear and what the innuendos are going on about how uh, Chetwin and uh, council, mayor and council are addressing this. This is some of the stuff that uh, needs to be out, put out there that we advocate for our citizens. We, uh, we feel when something happens like this. It deeply affects us as uh, people as, uh, because we are citizens of Chetwin and we uh, don't like it when something happens to this magnitude. It's terrible. How's the response been at the uh, provincial and federal level to this? As I see it right now, they're communicating with us until I see the the actual uh, uh, plan of uh, how they're going to. Uh, they talked about assistance in the financial part of it. Uh, one of the major things I believe is the bridging of a pension. That meaning if you're uh, 50 and you've got five more years where you can, you can collect a pension, I believe that you will, they will uh, make that up. So if you're getting, uh, I guess, for example, $1,200, and if they bridge that to 55 if you're 50, they'll possibly give you another $500 so that you'll be getting uh, $1,700 for, for a month. 